In today's video, we talk about less known and less frequently injured ligaments of the ankle or the foot, and that is the Lisfranc ligament complex and the bifurcate ligament. Okay, let's start with the Lisfranc ligament or the Lisfranc ligament complex. Basically, the Lisfranc ligament complex can get injured by two different mechanisms. One is high energy trauma, such as in motor vehicle accidents when the end result is a Lisfranc fracture displacement or luxation. And these are significant injuries and about half of them end up with just post-traumatic osteoarthritis of the Lisfranc joint. The Lisfranc joint can also be injured with low energy trauma and then we call it Lisfranc injury or midfoot sprains. The Lisfranc ligament complex actually has three different parts. Here is the overview of the, of the Lisfranc ligament. We have here the dorsal one from the medial cuneiform bone to the base of the second metatarsal bone and here a plantar view where we have here the plantar obliquely running ligaments of the Lisfranc ligament complex from the medial cuneiform to the bases of the second and third metatarsal bone. Here in more detail, again the same course, that's the dorsal Lisfranc ligament. Now this is more of a short axis view and you can see here the dorsal Lisfranc ligament, then in the middle we have the interosseous component, which is as I already said the Lisfranc proper and then here on the plantar aspect we have the plantar Lisfranc ligament with its two separate bundles typically originating from the same area each one going to one of the bases of the second, second and third metatarsal bone. This is the plantar view and again you can see here this y-shaped ligament here and this is still a glimpse of the interosseous component. Let's start off here with the Lisfranc ligament. So we have a foot here with um, isotropic voxels and we then just reformat it so we have better visibility where we want to go and you can see here I am right on the medial cuneiform and then we are going to the dorsal aspect of the foot and what we want to look for here is a ligament that connects the cuboid with the second metatarsal here. And we can see here we have some ligament like structure that is running here onto the base of the second metatarsal. So this one here, that is the dorsal Lisfranc ligament, which is the weakest one of those. From here, if you go plantarly, then you are here in the region between the bones. So we have here the medial cuneiform and here the base of the second metatarsal and we can see this strong black structure here which is the interosseous component of the Lisfranc ligament complex. Also very nicely visible here on the axials if you scroll through and you can see there is like a second component down here. As you can see there is more than one fascicle here between these bones in the interosseous part if I'm scrolling back and forth. And on the coronals this is also very nicely seen here and then here the second component. If we go even further plantarly then we are now here at the level of the base of the medial cuneiform and what we can see here then is the plantar Lisfranc ligament and you can see it best here on the short axis view where you have these two fascicles. Here one is running from the medial cuneiform to the base of the second metatarsal and here one to the base of the third metatarsal. So this is a minimum intensity projection view here and you can see this y-shaped ligament there. And this is basically the same here. And again here on the short axis the plantar one, interosseous one and the dorsal one. Now let's try this here on a patient with more conventional sequences which are a little bit thicker. So we have here our transverse sections of the ankle joint and this is the medial cuneiform, we are on the dorsal aspect, this is probably part here of the dorsal Lisfranc ligament, which is not really important. If we go to the midsection here, we can see this Lisfranc ligament proper here between the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal, and if we go even further down, we can start to see some fibers running here obliquely, which are part of the 
planter component of the Lis Frank ligament complex. Before we move on to the bifurcate ligament, I would like to take a minute and say thank you to my newest patrons, that is Kin Hoy and Arsalan, which joined me last month. Thanks guys, and also thanks a lot to my previous patrons, Joanna and Christine, which are supporting me for some time now. As a patron, which is just another word for supporter, you get access to exclusive video content that is only available over on my Patreon page and we do quizzes and you can interact with me a little bit more on a personal level. So go check it out, you find the link down below. The next ligament is the bifurcate ligament. It consists of two different parts and both originate from the anterior process of the calcaneus and one is running to the navicular bone and one to the cuboid bone. Also, as the plantar Lisfranc ligament, it is also Y-shaped and sometimes it is mistaken for the spring ligament. So be very mindful about it that this is not the spring ligament because we are actually on the lateral side of the foot and not on the medial side where the spring ligament complex connects the calcaneus with the navicular bone. Frequently you can see avulsion injuries of the bifurcate ligament when you have these isolated fractures or fragments of the anterolateral process of the calcaneus. And you have the ligament here running to the lateral aspect of the navicular bone and the second component is running here onto the cuboid bone here. This is called the calcaneonavicular ligament, sometimes also called the lateral calcaneonavicular ligament and this is the calcaneocuboid ligament. Nevertheless, then there is the dorsolateral calcaneocuboid ligament. Um, you sometimes see these tiny little avulsion fractures here which are either the joint capsule or part of this ligament. And then you have so many other different ligaments all over the place that I really do not want to cover. This is just a zoom in again, anterior process, the Y-shaped ligament here for better visibility, calcaneonavicular ligament and calcaneocuboid ligament. And both together make the bifurcate ligament. Here the same patient as previously, and now let's have a look at the bifurcate ligament and its two components. You go to the lateral aspect of the ankle joint, then you are looking for the anterior process of the calcaneus and you can immediately see this band-like structure here with a little bit brighter signal here in the middle. So this is the lateral calcaneonavicular ligament, it's one of component of the bifurcate ligament. And if you go more laterally in this direction, you can see this very small band here which is the calcaneocuboid ligament here. So this is a very thin structure in this patient here. This is the bifurcate ligament, Y-shaped. And here in another patient, again, you are looking for the anterior process of the calcaneus. And then you can see here these bands connecting this process with the lateral aspect of the navicular bone. Here probably consisting of two different fibers with some fat in between. And if you go more on the lateral aspect here, you will see here the um, calcaneocuboid ligament, which is the second component of the bifurcate ligament. So we have this component and this component. That's it for my ankle series. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And please recommend also my channel to your friends or fellow co-workers if you have some and um, spread the word. So basically I'm very happy about every subscriber that I get. It's really motivating me a lot. And with that, see you next week.